Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 620. Menopause causes insomnia and sleep apnea without testosterone and estradiol. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. I'm going to talk about insomnia today, and especially insomnia in women. It has been um, a fact that I have known forever, well, not really forever, but 20 years, that when you are menopausal, you begin to sleep badly. You wake up, you have hot flashes, you don't feel rested in the morning, you feel like you want to go back to bed all the time. All of those feelings and symptoms have to do with what we call insomnia, having poor sleep. Um, My patients list their symptoms before they come to see me. I ask them to check off all the symptoms that they have. And the first 20 or so symptoms have to do with lack of estrogen uh, and testosterone. So when I'm looking at those, I can tell what their symptoms mean in terms of what their lab will look like. So one of the symptoms that almost everybody who is female, who has lost their hormones list, is insomnia. They just can't stay asleep. They usually describe waking up, not being able to go back to sleep, wandering around the house, eating, reading a book. They still can't go to sleep. And then about the time they're supposed to wake up, then they can go to sleep. And then, but they can't because they have to go to work. So these are symptoms that actually start way earlier than menopause. They build up over time, and then they're worse after menopause. They usually start at about age 40 when testosterone decreases, and then they go on to be very bad or even worse at menopause, which is around 52 average age. So because my patients have always said this, and after they get their testosterone and estrogen in pellet form, They say, wow, this is so weird, but I sleep better. I'm rested. I don't wake up at night. And I know that that is secondary to their testosterone and their estrogen, and I've heard it thousands of times. So why does that happen? And why has medicine given us sleep sleep drugs, but they have not until now told us, yes, hormones and sleep are linked, and the lack of, hor- of estrogen and testosterone are called, they're called sex hormones. Um, those two hormones actually, when they're deficient, cause insomnia. Why are we not treating that initially without treating people with Ambien or, or um, medications that make you drowsy like clonazepam? We use those drugs instead of just replacing hormones, which would make people feel so much better with one treatment. So this is a very personal um, symptom for me because when I had my ovaries removed, um, the very first thing that happened to me was that I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep at all. No matter how tired I was, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't stay asleep, and I was tired all the time. Now, you have to remember that at that time, I was a a practicing OBGYN, and I was used to not sleeping. In fact, I did great without sleep, I thought, um, because when I went to sleep at night, I would sleep within seconds, and I would stay asleep in a deep sleep. I could even sleep, you know, if I'm waiting for a surgery for them to set up the room and stuff, I could sit on the floor of the operating room, lean against the wall, put my arms around my knees, and fall asleep, and the nurse would wake me up when it was time to operate. Now, I was completely alert and awake, and that little bit of sleep really refreshed me. After I had my ovaries out and I was in a um, medically induced menopause, I couldn't sleep anywhere. I couldn't sleep at night. I couldn't sleep in between anything. This was terrible for me because my ability to sleep anywhere and my ability to take naps 
and get rest in small, in small amounts at different times of the day was gone. And I was not sleeping at all. I was so tired. But this also led to me not being able to think as clearly. And that's a known side effect of insomnia. So low testosterone leads to insomnia, which leads to being not unable to think or remember things. Now, I've always had a, a really fast, quick mind. So yes, I was a little bit less uh, able to think quickly and to make decisions quickly. I was more like average people. <laughs> but I was used to being able to do this, think really fast and remember everything and, and recall everything. And this symptom took that away. And so then I was struggling. I also um, felt like I looked tired all the time. My skin got saggy and bad. Uh, I had circles under my eyes. This is, I mean, I, I didn't have motivation to do things. I didn't want to get, get out of bed. I didn't want to go to work, which I've never had since I was had my first job at 10. I loved working, and I still do. But during that period of time, before I had hormones, I got replaced testosterone and estrogen in pellet form. Before that, I was miserable. I thought I was going to have to quit. You've probably heard this story in some of my other uh, health casts. However, uh, when I got my first testosterone pellet and estrogen injection or in insertion, these little pellets put in my hip, the first symptom that went away for me was insomnia. I was able to sleep very deeply and I was able to sleep through the night. I did not wake up. It honestly gave me a whole new lease on life to be able to sleep. It affects everything in your body. So when this happened, uh, I realized the power of sex hormones and the lack of them, what they do to you, and also what they could retrieve, bring you back to normal, uh, normal everything after you had your hormones back. I don't understand why medicine has not um, been efficient and said, well, testosterone and estrogen treat a multitude of symptoms and diseases. We could just give that, and then we wouldn't have to use all these other drugs. Um, a lot of things about medicine I don't understand because it doesn't make logical sense. However, the Journal of Endocrinology in September of 2020, and I just found this article, um, did research on sleep and the ovarian hormones estrogen and progesterone, they left out testosterone, of course, because they seem to always leave that out. But um, I did take estrogen before I took the pellets, and estrogen alone did not make my sleep better. I had to get the testosterone as well. So happily, finally, since I've been doing this since 2020, um, two, 20, 2002, um, finally, I have an article that supports all of the things I've been saying about replacing hormones. Um, and they say there's an, um, this is from the article, there's an emerging evidence that menopause-associated hormone loss contribute to elevated risk of um, insomnia and, um, and also dementia. So if you have insomnia long enough, your brain does not recover and it does not heal itself, and you start losing brain cells, and, and you end up with dementia. So that's a, a, a preventive measure, is to take hormones and prevent that. So they used to say insomnia is, is secondary to aging. Well, in my mind, aging means lack of testosterone, lack of estrogen. And you could interchange this in most articles that they say aging causes this. Well, lack of sex hormones causes aging, so aging then causes insomnia. They, uh, at, the same, at the same time in your life when testosterone drops, which is after 40 for women, and estrogen becomes uh, non-existent after menopause when, they're, when women are 50, um, all of these things happen exactly parallel with the symptoms of insomnia getting worse and worse. 
The reason my symptoms were so dramatic is because I had my ovaries out. One day I had estrogen and testosterone, the next day I didn't. So it was more obvious to me what that difference was instead of that slow decreasing uh, of the hormones and the increasing of the uh, symptoms related to them. So I'm going to show you a graph here that the um, article in uh, Journal of Endocrinology in uh, 2020 uh, posted. And this graph shows, the first column shows the um, how your cycle, a female cycle is, estrogen and progesterone is in this cycle. And the second column shows perimenopause, which I call testosterone loss. Because during perimenopause, what's happening is your estrogen and your progesterone are not on that cyclic, you know, you ovulate halfway through the month and you have a period at the end of the month and you start over again. Basically, sometimes you ovulate, sometimes you don't. Your fertility drops after 40 because you're not ovulating all the time and you're not making uh, progesterone. So that's what this second column shows at the very top on the top line. And then postmenopause is when your ovaries stop working altogether. They no longer make estrogen, progesterone, or testosterone. So that's what the third column is showing you. Now, they show menopausal symptoms, which are hot flashes, night sweats, insomnia, irritability, um, dry vagina, painful intercourse, lack of sex drive is from testosterone. But they say menopausal symptoms, you don't have any in that first column. In the second column, they don't list it, but many of our patients are getting some of those symptoms, plus they have PMS because they don't have progesterone every month at the middle of the month. They don't ovulate, so you don't make progesterone if you don't ovulate. So you develop PMS between 40 and 50. Postmenopause, whenever that happens, if we take your ovaries out or if you are over 50 and go through a natural menopause, these menopausal symptoms appear, hot flashes, night sweats, severe, they usually stay. You have insomnia that is worsening, you can't sleep at all, you're not rested. Uh, you're unable to think. All of the symptoms that I have just described happen, and they don't necessarily go away. In, in most people, hot flashes continue throughout their life. It's waiting for them to stop is not a good answer to this because you still are going to have trouble sleeping. You're still going to have trouble with um, thinking, energy, motivation, uh, muscle mass, being able to have stamina, all of these things are going to just continue to be symptoms that you have. After, underneath menopausal symptoms, they have memory. Well, that means your brain. And they state that there is some menstrual cyclic fluctuation in your memory um, before, even before perimenopause. I don't generally see that. Most of my patients were on the pill, and so they didn't have fluctuations. And this line was pretty much flat. Uh, both the estrogen and progesterone were low. So that was, um, that was not that significant most of the time with patients who had pills or um, a Mirena IUD. Perimenopause, they found that verbal, verbal memory and your ability to recall words and being able to so problem solve all decreased. Now, that's when testosterone drops, and that's when you start losing the ability to think as fast and, and do your work as fast and be able to do two or three things at once. When menopause hits, then your ability to do all of these things, remember things, and to think through problems and to do your job just get worse and worse and worse over time. Part of that has to do with your brain not working as well because you don't have sleep. Part of it has to do with the fact that testosterone in your body helps you repair your brain. Testosterone is a repairing hormone. It repairs your muscles after you exercise so you can build muscle. It helps, it's an anabolic steroid. It helps you build bone. It helps you build muscle. It helps you grow your hair. It helps you uh, have your cells, uh, basically, your cells are always growing on your skin. They grow to the top. They die. They, they slough off. So it helps your cel cellular turnover. Um, this is all what we have when we're young and then don't have when we're older unless we replace both estrogen and testosterone. And then they list sleep disorders. 
So sleep disorders are usually during the, the uh, reproductive age before 40. They're usually not that common unless you have, uh, you're on certain medications that keep you awake or uh, you have something to worry about and then during that time that you're worried, you don't sleep. But that's, it's usually secondary to an outside reason. Something on the outside of your environment, something that's not internal is causing that. Then a perimenopause, then the um, sleep apnea starts happening. You start gaining weight, which goes along with sleep apnea. And um, you have more insomnia symptoms, not necessarily hot flashes that, that wake you up at night, but not being able to sleep through the night, waking up and not being able to go back to sleep is a testosterone deficiency sy symptom. If you want to read more about that, you can go to my book, The Secret Female Hormone, and I have a whole, I have a whole chapter on that. Now, if you go to postmenopause, that's when most people don't sleep well, they don't sleep through the night, they have hot flashes, they wake up all the way through the night, uh, and, they ha and there's more sleep apnea. I mean, I've never seen so many people on sleep apnea monitors and, um, and rebreathers. So all of these things that we are discussing that have to do with sleep and the outcome of not having sleep are made worse when our hormones decrease. And I'm here to tell you that when I replace testosterone and estradiol, in the form of pellets, and sometimes progesterone, I can tell you that people's sleep 95% of the time is better. Now, if I had somebody who never slept their whole lives, or who have uh, shift work, they work at night, not during, I mean, they work at night, not during the day, they sleep during the day, many of those patients, I'm not going to be able to fix them, because that had to do with genetics and other abnormalities and their lifestyle. However, the people that get their insomnia starting in their late 30s and early 40s, and it gets worse with time, those folks, those women, it's gone. And they can tell when their pellets are starting to wear off if they wait a little too long. It's usually, I give pellets every four months. So usually at about eh, three and three quarters months, they may start waking up in the middle of the night and then they remember, oh yeah, I need my pellets or I have an appointment next week to get my pellets. But it, that's usually the tell that my pellets are, are getting low. And that is because I have, uh, I wake up, I don't sleep, I'm not as rested. So uh, if I wait too long, that's what happens. Some people have other tells, but that's the tell that I have. Now, um, there's, there's a big push here to help get people to sleep better so that they don't get dementia. Now, not having sleep, you would say, well, why does not having sleep cause dementia? Well, sleep is vital to your life. We spend a third of our lives asleep, and we have to, because during the day, we're using up our energy, we're breaking down, we're breaking down our cells, we're breaking down our neurons, things are damaging what we uh, use every day. So it's kind of like rust. We're rusting everything that we, that we need. And when we sleep, that's when our body can clean it up. It goes to clean up our, our neurotransmitters. They call this, there's, they say that in this article, it describes this, that there's two things that basically, um, cause you to, to sleep and what sleep then, um, causes your body to, what causes your body to need sleep. And one is that you need to bring your body back to homeostasis or a balance between breakdown and build up. So sleep gives you a time and a place and an ability to repair everything. But you also have something called sleep pressure. So in your, in your brain, there is literally an increase of sleep pressure that goes on during the hours that you're awake. And if you're awake too many hours, this pressure builds up and builds up. And the only way to treat it is to go to sleep and stay asleep and have deep sleep. And that relieves all the pressure. So I thought that was kind of a new, um, a new term for me when I was reading this medical article. Now, Another factor that has to do with sleep is your circadian rhythm. Circadian rhythm has to do with 
During the day, we're awake. At night, we're asleep. When it's bright outside, we stay awake. When it's dark outside, we go to sleep. Well, if people have shift work and they sleep during the day, their sleep is not as good because it's not supposed to be during the day. I mean, if you do that, you have to block out all the light from your windows so that you actually uh, make it feel like nighttime for you. It's still not good because your body was made to be awake during the day and asleep at night. It's not good for you. Your your there's many of your hormones that are secreted during the morning, like cortisol, at the highest level when you wake up, and then they decrease over time, and they're the lowest at 3 a.m. So, as as an example, that hormone is not going to it's not going to change when you are working at night and staying awake and then going to sleep during the day. You're still going to have that diurnal cycle. You need to have your cortisol when you're awake to help you stay awake, and you need it to drop in the middle of the night. But if you're not doing that kind of work, day work, then this is really putting uh, pressure on your system and on your body. And if you notice, night workers tend to be more obese than day workers. Because this change in the in the circadian rhythm and the and your cycle is reacts by slowing your metabolism down, and it causes you to gain more fat. Now, um, one of my one of my cardiologists, Dr. Twyman, uh, wants his patients to go outside in the morning, no matter what the temperature is, and and look at the sunrise or look toward the sun and get that light in their eyes for 20 minutes. And I think that's a great idea. It helps you wake up. It gives you the right kind of light. And then he is very strict about people having a dark bedroom and sleeping when it's dark so that you can make mel um, melatonin. Melatonin only occurs in your brain and is made in your brain when you're sleeping in a dark place. So if you don't have a dark place, you can wear an eye mask. It still makes it dark for your body. So this is something that has to do with your sleep that does not have to do necessarily with your hormones, but it does affect other hormones like melatonin. So um, this is one, another quote from the, their article. It says, peri postmenopause is associated with increased prevalence of insomnia characterized by difficult falling asleep and or staying asleep, restless leg syndrome, uh, and sleep apnea. And that is, that it coincides with what I have seen in my practice over 20 years, that when testosterone and estrogen are low, all of these things happen. When I treat them, all of those things go away. It's a miracle. And we don't use Ambien and we don't use clonazepam. We use just giving you the hormones that you are missing, we are giving you back which makes total sense to me. It's actually very logical. When I treat my patients with testosterone, they not only, they not only feel different, they look different. They come in and they look like different people. Sometimes I have to go back and look at their picture to make sure I didn't walk into the wrong room or they didn't walk into the wrong room because they look so much younger, so much healthier, so much better. They have pink in their cheeks. They, they have taken time to dress nicely. This is all secondary to their better motivation. They feel better. They've had sleep. They're energized. They're back to their old selves. I've been accused of making people into different people. All I'm doing is making them into the person they used to be when they were young and healthy. And that's all anybody can hope for is to, is to turn the clock back and have the hormones that you had when you were young so that you can then have the body and mind and emotions of the person that you were, say, in your 30s. I'm not bringing people back to 16. I'm bringing you back to your 30s, which is, is prime time when we're in the reproductive um, uh, decade so that we can, that's when we're the best, is when we're in our reproductive decade of the 30s. So this is what giving you your hormones back and taking away your insomnia and making you rest, repair your body, sleep better. It will decrease all from there, we decrease all of the symptoms and diseases of aging. I am very adamant 
that people need to get their hormones back to be healthy throughout their lives and not just exist for the rest of their lives. Our lives shouldn't end halfway through, especially for women. We're just getting going at 50. So by replacing our hormones, we give ourselves both the drive, the energy, the brain power, and, um, and the looks to go further and to actually be more productive for the second half of our life. So think about that and think about getting your hormones replaced if you're suffering from insomnia. Thanks for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.